Coach Prime in Colorado, they got embarrassed and humiliated in Pullman, Washington. Oh my goodness. They lost 56 to 14. And with that loss, they are now out of contention to be bowl eligible. And there was somebody that hit me up in the DMs on Twitter that asked me, JT, is Colorado season a disappointment, not making it to a bowl game year one under Coach Prime? And you see, a lot of people keep saying that Coach Prime didn't live up to the hype. Like, what do you mean he didn't live up to the hype? This was a team that only won one game last season. They tripled that in their first three weeks playing. Now, albeit, you know, you would have loved for them to be able to win more than four games, and you would have loved for them to be competitive against Washington State, and you expected them to beat Stanford. You lost those games, and it wasn't all due to talent. A lot of those losses that Colorado has suffered down the stretch has been due to poor coaching. And I don't think Deion Sanders is a bad coach, but he's not as good as a coach as I initially thought he was coming into this season. And you see, when he was at Jackson State, he was a big fish in a small pond. Coaching in the SWAC is way different from coaching Power 5 football in the Pac-12. And the Pac-12 has been a fantastic conference this year. And you definitely could see that in a lot of games that Colorado lost, like against Oregon and Oregon State, they were outmatched physically and talent-wise. All right, we get that. But at the end of the day, you know, this season, when you look at it from an overall big lens, it's still a success. I don't consider this season to be a disappointment. Now, I had Colorado winning six games this year. All oh, because I thought that they would be able to at least beat Stanford and beat Washington State. But that didn't happen. But even though they didn't live up to my preseason prediction, in hindsight, I still understood the kind of job that Deion Sanders was walking into. You're not going to be able to field a great team with just a team that you just assembled from the transfer portal. You got to be able to recruit. You got to be able to develop. And of course, you got to mix that in with getting a couple of guys here and there from the transfer portal, similar to Florida State. When you look at the teams that have built their squads through the transfer portal, such as USC and LSU, they had a lot of success year one, but look what those teams did in year two. USC only won seven games. LSU didn't even come close to sniffing the SEC West title like they did year one under Brian Kelly. Coach Prime sees in that Colorado is still a pretty big success considering the fact that this team won one game last year. They were arguably the worst program in college football last season. He came in there and he won four games and he gave this, this school a lot of juice, a lot of hype, a lot of momentum when they got out to that fast 3 0 start. And a lot of people recalibrated their expectations. Hell, even I kind of was looking at Colorado a little bit differently when they started out 3 0 and I picked them to beat TCU. So with Colorado getting out to such a fast start, people who don't really follow college football like that, they were like, oh shit, like Colorado looks like a really good team. Let's see what these boys do with all the hype now. And then they came back down to earth. And after that, they only won one game since they started out 4-0. and And I think that Coach Prime, the things that he needs to work on is making sure that his team is more locked in on the game and not so focused on the lights, the cameras, and the social media praise and the social media recognition. What they did before that game against Oregon was unexcusable. They deserved that ass whooping that Oregon gave them. When you have your players stomping and dancing on the opposing team's logo, disrespecting them, you deserve to get embarrassed and you deserve to get humiliated. And when Dan Lanning in that pregame speech said that the Cinderella story is over, he met it. Not only did they end Colorado's win streak, but they also end the, they ended and derailed all the hype that Colorado had gained up to that point. And then you started to realize the more you watch Colorado's games, Coach Prime's flaws. Even his recruiting hasn't been that good. Like, before I even went on live, like, I read something that they just had somebody flip from Colorado to somebody else. Coach Prime's recruiting isn't even in the top 50 right now. I thought that he would be a way better recruiter than what he is. 
at least at this moment. I thought that, you know, despite the fact that you're coaching at Colorado and it's kind of hard to sell people on the idea of wanting to go to Boulder, Colorado, I thought with the fact that he's Deion Sanders, that would be enough that he could at least be better than what the recruiting class currently is. I mean, they're not even in the top 50 right now, and it's going to take a lot of miracles on National Signing Day for this to turn into a top 25 class. This season isn't a disappointment, though. It's a little bit of a disappointment when you realize that Deion Sanders isn't as good as a coach as most people thought he was, myself included. But it's still a big success considering the fact that this team won four games. What makes it a disappointment is that you could have had more. And I guess that's where the people who say this is a massive disappointment, he was making statements that his mouth couldn't cash or whatever people say to hate on Deion Sanders. I can kind of understand where some of those people are coming from. And they got a point. You know, like when they were 3-0 and and they were super confident and they were talking and he was saying, if our confidence offends your insecurity, then that's a you problem. I get that. Because at one point, it kind of did seem like this became more of a movie than it was about football. And I was telling my homeboy when I was describing Colorado, who doesn't really watch college football like that, he was trying to understand, like, why is Deion Sanders getting so much hate despite the fact that they only won one game last year? And I told him it's because when he started out 3-0, that's probably the worst thing that could have happened to this team. Because... Their fast start forced everybody to forget what they were last year and what the realistic expectations were. They were projected to win three and a half games this year. You know how much money I won off of Colorado winning four games this year? That was the lock of the century. But it's just the fact that they started out 3-0 and and then people start to re-look at them and say, man, they're 3-0, and like they probably could win it all this year. They probably could win eight, nine games this year. And then once they started to play the tough teams on their schedule like Oregon and USC and Oregon State and UCLA, you could tell that they were outmatched. But you could also tell in those games against Stanford and Washington State that, you know, coaching was also a big issue as well. And Coach Prime, his clock management isn't good. He doesn't make great in-game adjustments. And his ego is a big reason why Colorado is not going bowling this year. Them winning six games was not an unrealistic expectation like how a lot of people try to tell me. Look, I'm a big fan of Deion Sanders, but at the same time, I'm also subjective with how I talk about him, how I view him, and I'm also pretty reasonable. I don't think it was unreasonable to expect them to win six games when they could have beaten Stanford and they could have beaten Washington State. Unless Shadur Sanders would have gotten injured in either one of those games, which he did against Washington State, And obviously, we knew that Shadur Sanders was a big part of why Colorado was able to have the success that they had early on this season. But really, when you think about this team, it only was built on two things. Great receivers on the outside and Shadur Sanders. That was about it. No offensive line and pretty much no defense, although the defense did play well for the past couple of games prior to this Washington State loss. But overall, if you were to zoom out on this season and you look at this thing from a 180-degree lens, this is still a pretty successful season. I wouldn't view this season as a disappointment only because, like, Colorado wasn't expected to even win four games this year. Most people thought that they would be lucky enough to win two or three maybe. So they exceeded expectations. Deion Sanders still overachieved to this point. He did what he needed to do. He got this team to a place when... They got some hope. They got some promise. They got a lot of media attention. They got a lot of eyes on them now. Now he needs to improve his recruiting, improve as a head coach, you know, fire a couple of guys on that coaching staff, bring in some better guys who can find a way to get this offensive line playing at a better level and try to find a better offensive coordinator, although I don't believe that Sean Lewis was the issue. But Deion Sanders... His first season isn't a disappointment in my opinion. I think that this was a pretty successful season. If you thought that Deion Sanders was going to be able to win eight, nine games out the gate, you had too high expectations and you don't really follow college football all that closely. And I know that a lot of people that follow the Colorado program, 
mostly are following it because of Deion Sanders. There's not really a lot of true diehard Colorado fans that I see in my comment section that often. Most of the times it's casual fans of college football or people that don't really watch college football all that much that only are watching to either support Deion Sanders or hate on Deion Sanders. And if you really follow college football and if you're a diehard Colorado fan, you're happy with the progress that Deion Sanders made in his first season. And you got a lot of reason to be optimistic going into the Big 12, a conference that probably is more of a mystery and is a lot less tougher than what the Pac-12 has been this year. Like, Deion Sanders rocked into a really tough conference. Like, who would have thought that the Pac-12 in their final season of existence would be as competitive as what it's been? So that didn't really do him no favors neither. Like, if he was playing in the Big 12 or in the ACC there was a good chance that Colorado probably could have pulled off two, three more wins, and they could have won six, seven games. But with how tough this conference is and the fact that he pretty much had to build a team through scratch, you know, the expectations really weren't all that high. And he pretty much overachieved because they were only expected to win three games. Winning four games is an accomplishment. And I look at this season as still a success Although he'll probably tell you that it was a little bit disappointing because they probably would have loved to be bowl eligible and they definitely could have been. It's like they were at the dinner table and they didn't eat all their food. They left a couple of crumbs on their plate. That's what Colorado season was, in my opinion. 